poems helped to higher ground by boat. It was a day when streets turned to rivers. Three inches of rain fell in the Glasgow area in 24 hours, a record. And in some places, the floodwater's still rising. Even those sent to help were surprised by the depth of the water. The town of Paisley has been worst affected. These houses have up to six feet of flooding inside. Devastated. We've just moved into the house in March there, and we're not the only people that, the whole street, we've all spent a fortune cleaning our houses up and all the rest of it. Now this is happened. A mile away, a quiet crescent became a boating lake. 30 people have been rescued from the rising waters in this street alone. Others will have to move out soon. This is absolutely terrible, this has happened about 30, 30 years ago, exactly the same, but it wasn't as far as up this time. It was only up to the steps, now it's right up. We missed it the last time, but now it's um, going to just come up into our house now. The rescue services have been kept busy in Paisley all day. The damage to houses and cars will run to millions of pounds. It's an accumulation of two days, persistent rain, high tides and blockages in the sewage. Hundreds of people will have to spend the night with friends or in emergency shelters and 10,000 people in the greater Glasgow area will be without electricity because of the rain. No one here has seen flooding anything like this for at least a quarter of a century. And with the rain still coming down, the worry is that more people in the area will be affected. Flooding has disrupted rail, bus and ferry services in much of west and central Scotland. Local weather forecasters say there's no sign of any let up in the rain. Colin Blaine, BBC News, Paisley. Raining in Glasgow, indeed, it's raining across Northern Ireland and much of northwest England too. That rain band slowly moving south in the next 12 hours. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. Glasgow will have a much drier and brighter day on Monday. Still fairly stiff. We're missing tonight in the worst floods to hit central Scotland for more than a century. Large parts of Strathclyde have been badly hit, with homes flooded, roads blocked and rail lines submerged. The Met Office has issued a severe weather warning for parts of Scotland tomorrow. Most were caught unprepared by the floods, which in some areas resulted in water up to five feet deep. In Glasgow, it was the wettest 24-hour period ever, with rainfall of up to five inches recorded. In some areas, the water broke into the houses, causing damage and distress. Completely devastated, and uh, I must say a, a wee bit shocked, I know. Uh, all day I've been holding back tears, really tears of regret. Uh, it's just terrible. Entire housing schemes have been evacuated, with several hundred people transferred to emergency accommodation in churches and schools by both police and the army. Many roads throughout Strathclyde have been waterlogged. Some have been sealed off, causing traffic chaos. Electricity supplies across the west of Scotland continue to be cut off as the emergency services battle to move people to safety. Some train and bus services have been suspended. Many schools will not open tomorrow. A severe weather warning has been issued with the rain expected to continue across Scotland tonight. Although conditions are expected to improve after midnight, residents in affected areas are being advised to protect themselves and their homes from some of the worst weather conditions central Scotland has ever witnessed. Asma Mir, ITN, Glasgow. Hello, good evening. Well, after record-breaking rainfall in parts of Strathclyde, there are some signs now that things are beginning to improve. This is the wriggling weather front that's brought all the troubles. It'll be drifting only slowly southwards over the next 12 to 24 hours or so, with brighter, colder weather following along behind. Overnight, police, the fire brigade and the army evacuated more than 600 people from their homes in Pollock, Kirkintillach and Paisley, where one of the worst hit areas was Fergusley Park. Daylight brought many of the residents back to survey the damage to their homes. Colin McKinnon was with them. Fergusley Park had been swamped by more than six feet of flood water over the weekend. Residents who had been forced out of their homes spent the night in emergency accommodation at a local school. When the flood water had subsided this morning, some went back to inspect the damage. They found sodden carpets, peeling paint and wallpaper, furniture and belongings scattered untidily where the receding water had discarded them. I could have screamed boo murder when I saw the state of the place. I never thought it was as bad as, well, when we left it, I mean, everything was floating in water, but when you see it now, it's just a waste of time. Some residents had moved into new houses on the estate within the past year. It's ruined, totally ruined everything. 
everything, every bit of savings or anything we've had. I mean, this was our dream house and it's all went to, it's a, a shattered dream. We've got nothing left. Nothing. And, I mean, only a couple of weeks away before Christmas, you know. It's just a disaster now. I don't know what we're going to do. And what about insurance? Are you insured? No, no we any house insurance at all. What do you plan to do then, to try and salvage something out of this? I think there's something to blame for it, because there's always been a drainage problem in the street since I moved in it. And I've, I've heard that from different people in the street, it's stayed in the street longer. But this street has got a bad drainage problem. This woman was waiting on her parents to open the door of their home and couldn't let us in, but she was able to describe the damage inside. In my house it's terrible, there's beds and all that floating about, your quilt sets, my clays, the wardrobes and all that are soaking inside, the, the fridge or your freezer stuff is all wrecked, the plates, everything. And then as you get into the Wainsies room, all the Wainsies clays and all that are soaking. You get in the living room and mum always got a brick fire surround built in the house and all the attics and the flares just pure, it's terrible and the, the carpets are all soaking all pulled up and all that. The, Oh, it's just not worth talking about, do you know what I mean? It's sad, just two weeks before Christmas, you know what I mean? We've not got a house. It's terrible. The people we spoke to today said they didn't want to move back into their homes unless they were given a guarantee that measures would be taken by the authorities to ensure that there would be no repeat of this weekend's flooding. Colin McKinnon reporting Scotland, Fergusley Park in Paisley. Strathclyde region officials admitted they don't know how long it's going to take to restore the damage done by the floods or how much it's going to cost. But they say their priority is to help first and worry about the bills later. Our home affairs correspondent Leslie Anderson reports. The emergency services assisted by the armed forces worked round the clock to help those stranded, forced from their homes by the floods. The fire brigade has rescued 400 people from flooded houses, cars or trucks. The bill for the clear-up is expected to run to millions of pounds. It is building up quite a heavy bill, uh, a matter of concern to the regional council, which does not have uh, resources lying around to address this. We will be in communication with the Scottish office about the situation, but the priority at the moment is to deal with the problems uh, and worry about the costs as they develop. Uh, at, at this time, it's the, the human need that is very much the priority. There's been an appeal for parts of Paisley, badly affected by the floods, to be declared a disaster area. It's a disaster of a scale that I've never seen in this area. I've lived in Paisley all my life. People are left here with literally what they stand up in in a lot of instances. Their furniture's ruined, their carpets are ruined. Christmas toys were floating away here yesterday on the river of water that's behind us. It really is a disaster for the people here. People have lost their house contents underwater. They've lost Christmas presents, they've lost everything that they own. I mean, what we're really looking for this afternoon is not to be fobbed off, is not to be told that there's a scheme in place, which is clearly inadequate. What we want is special and additional money to deal with the immediate problems, human problems that people are facing. How far did the water get up? Just below your top windowsill. Scottish Office Minister Alan Stewart toured the flooded area to assess for himself the extent of the damage. He reacted to the demands for emergency funding. If the authorities uh, put in claims, once they have assessed the costs incurred, and clearly that is not the priority, the priority is doing the work in the next 48 hours, that uh, we will consider the claims very sympathetically. I can't uh, give uh, a figure because obviously the authorities are, are not in a position themselves to give a figure. How can they be? Meanwhile, the region has set up an emergency committee which will meet round the clock to deal with the situation as it arises. Leslie Anderson, reporting Scotland, Strathclyde. It's emerged that more rain fell over the weekend in parts of the central belt than was expected during the entire month of December. Heather Reid joins us now a little earlier than usual. Heather, what areas were worst hit? It appears to be to the south and west of Glasgow, Jackie. If we can look at some figures there. Glasgow, this is during the weekend, have had 118 millimetres of rainfall. Kirkintilloch turns out to be the wettest area, 171 millimetres of rainfall. That's over five inches. I do have some figures for Paisley, 133 millimetres, and East Kilbride, 117 millimetres. That compares to some eastern areas, Edinburgh, 43 millimetres.